Welcome back. You join me as I'm basking in the glory of the Challenge Cup victory and I got to thinking, have I just became the bestie Sterling manager ever by winning this one wee Diddy Cup? So I went on the internet to fact check the other managers. And lo and behold, I find out a certain Alex Ferguson's very first managerial position at 32 years old was at East Stirling in 1974. And the first problem he had to overcome straight away was the fact that East Stirling had no goalkeepers in their whole squad. Classic East Stirling. But he would very, very shortly leave to go and join St Mirren, and he would stay there for four years before actually being fired by St Mirren after falling out or something with the chairman, and then he would go to have, you know, some minor success at, you know, I think it was Aberdeen and then Manchester or something. So it seems like I've got rather large shoes to fill. Aberdeen has approached to sign Carmichael, who's one of their kind of youth reserve strikers. He's nowhere near the first team, so I choose to negotiate, but instead of doing the £100,000 negotiation, I noticed that a left back of theirs was up for exchange, so I do a wee swap deal with them, and Jamie McAllister here isn't actually too bad. He's nothing brilliant, but he's young. Scottish left back. Should do us a good wee shift. Our next league game is home to Gretna, who we absolutely decimate 5-0. Marco Suarez getting a brace with Lorimer, Diabate and Graveling all getting on the score sheet as well with one apiece. That puts us 6 points clear at the top of the league and a game in hand so we can actually go 9 points clear. We have another signing, although not so much, as this is Stuart Callahan, the left winger we actually got on loan at the start of the season. His contract ran out in the middle of October, for some strange reason, so I decided to make his actual loan permanent and sign them on a free. He'll actually be used as a backup, as Lorimer, who's playing left mid at the moment, is playing brilliantly, so yeah, I'm not dropping him. Our next match is away to the fourth place Montrose. They actually prove quite difficult to kind of break down and we win with quite a small 2-1 victory with Suarez and Graveling again getting on the score sheet with a goal apiece. That win actually puts his 9 points clear with a game in hand as Peterhead lost 2-1 to East Fife. It's also the beginning of November and I have the board confidence update and as you would expect they're delighted with how I'm managing the team. Lots of wins and being top of the league will do that for you. And I've also built up a rapport with the fans. Excellent. It's first and second place showdown as I host Peterhead. This is my chance to actually go 12 points clear with a game in hand if I defeat them right enough, which I am obviously looking to do. I'm fielding my usual and of course strongest first 11 against them. And I thought we just took the lead there but it's been ruled offside. Hmm. Hopefully we won't come back to regret that. Does it count this time? Yes. Right on half time, Diabate scores. Diabate, who's a right back, seems to be actually pitching in with quite a few goals so far. Yeah, quite like that. Just need to give my left back a kick up the arse now and saying, hey, how are you not scoring as much goals? Well, so far, it looks as if it's just all us. If we could get a second goal, I'd be very happy. Make some subs. Uh, yeah, Wood can come off for Suarez, since hmm, he's not playing too great. McAllister, the left back, he can come off, can try Traverser there. We'll save a third sub for later. Just in case, as 71 minutes is a wee bit air on, and it's offside. Ah, thank God the linesmen are doing their jobs today, because that could have been one each. Yeah, uh, Perry on, put him right back, Diawara inside. As Perry can play centre defence, but he's not not as good uh, there as Diawara could be. Can we hold on? We do. So that was actually a very close game. Uh, yeah, we only had one shot on target, and thankfully uh, we converted it. So yeah, twelve points clear with a game in hand. Absolutely romping the league so far. We have a midweek game away to Stirling, who are second bottom in the league. I make just two changes from the weekend game, replacing Graveling with Leishman at the right mid row, and left mid I replace Lorimer with Callahan. My team absolutely struggles this game, with Sterling actually taking the lead, drawing first blood, before we reply in the 73rd minute Alou getting a goal, but we just don't have enough to actually go on and get the three points, so this is our first dropped points in the league, gutting. 
so we're only 13 points ahead in the league. I aim to get back into winning ways straight away, so of course I put Lorimer and Graveling right back into the team for the league game away to East Fife. The only other change of note actually is Diawara's got a small injury, so Traversa's actually filling in for him. But apart from that, this is practically my strongest side. And we get back into winning ways, winning 2-0. Goals from Lorimer and Suarez. Alou picked up a tiny wee injury there, but he is only out for a few days. The games are coming thick and fast now, as we are now hosts to Elgin City in the league. I make just a couple of changes, Diawara coming straight back in the right back role, and we have David Wood filling in for Alou, as Alou technically isn't injured, has recovered from his injury, but he's still nowhere near match fit, as he's marked as being tired there. Doesn't make too much of a difference however, as we go on to win it 4-1. Diawara and Graveling scoring a goal apiece, Diawara again getting on the score sheet, and Marcos Suarez scoring a brace. Elgin drew one each away to Queen's Park, so that one moves us to 15 points clear. Finally. The top four are all in action against each other, as we're away to Albion Rovers, who are in third place, and Peterhead are hosting Morton, who Morton are in fourth place. The team lineup still has Wood in for a Lou as a Lou still hasn't fully recovered yet, and we have Jay Dennis filling in the midfield role right next to Ericsson there as Diabati has a small injury. With the team selected, let's get the game underway. Yeah, so obviously hoping for a I was about to say hoping for a win. We're one 0 down the third minute, but we pin them straight back. Marcos Suarez getting equalised on the fifth minute, a whole two minutes we had to wait before we equalised. Yeah, uh, I was trying to look up online interesting information about Albion Rovers. I try and do this for any team that we're kind of playing against. And yeah, they're just nothing interesting at all, it seems. Uh, the only thing I could find was... Oh, and we have Graveling scoring 2-1. So do we take a lead into half time? We do. Graveling actually uh, doing quite well for us. Seems to score pretty much every game, as well as obviously Marcos Suarez. But as I was saying, Albion Rovers, uh, the only interesting thing I could find was there's several teams called Albion Rovers all over the world, which isn't really that surprising considering, you know, Albion and Rovers, quite quite uh, common. Oh, they've just equalised. Right, uh, we have Suarez tiring, so we'll put the Kekne on. Um, as I don't like tired players, but yeah, that is quite annoying. Uh, to each Mercer scoring the seventy-first minute for them. Can we get one last push? So I'll make just a couple of subs just for the players that are tiring, I guess. Uh, Traversa, he can play midfield and defence. Uh, yeah, we'll put him left mid. And McMillan, he can go left back as McAllister's tiring. One last push. Come on, guys. Can we do it? Another late one up? Mm, no, but the looks of things, no. Mm, considering we absolutely dominated in stats, I'm disappointed with that. It's not all doom and gloom, however, as Morton beat Peterhead 2-1, which means we now go 16 points clear at the top. It's now the 1st of December, and I thought I would have a quick look through the stats of my players so far. So, the top goal scorer in the club, unsurprisingly, is Marcos Suarez, 9 appearances and 8 goals. Close behind is Lorimer and David Wood, both on 7 goals apiece. We have the top assister, Eriksson, 10 assists so far this season, by far away our best creative player. And, yeah, man of the match, Lorimer. Lorimer's most man of the match is just the 3, which seems, not doesn't really seem a lot. Let's have a look at the finances. Finances by beginning of December is 1.6 million. Not too bad. I was aiming originally, if you remember, by Christmas to have at least 1 million and we're safely there. And let's have a look at all the players we've sold. For a total of 1.8 million, we have sold 41 players. Can you believe that? 41 players I've actually sold. That is insane. So that brings about the end to the video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a wee like. Feel free to comment in the comment below. And if you want to see more from me on Championship Manager, let me know. And also, I'll be subscribed would be lovely. Thanks very much. Bye.